credit side. Okay, let's move on to a new type of adjusting entry, accrued expenses. Accrued expenses, remember the term accrued I mentioned on Monday, it represents accumulated. Here, this idea readily we talked about in chapter two, actually. And in the beginning of this chapter on Monday, we talked about, remember, the example of employee salary. So if you hired a person, an employee, to work for your business, they have been working continuously every single day from Monday to Friday. And if the check is being paid out on a biweekly basis, let's say last check was paid out May 15th, and you want to pay out the second check at the beginning of next month. When it reaches the end of the month, we want to recognize the portion of the salary expense that we owe to the employee already. So even though we have not paid out cash, this is an entry that we want to capture, which is called accrued expenses. So it's an accumulated of expenses that company has not yet paid out by cash. So which means at the same time, this generates a type of liability. So it could be accounts payable, could be salary payable, could be interest payable. All types of accrued expenses, different types, it could be interest expense. Once you borrow money from others, interest rolls on a timely basis. Okay, so every single day there's accumulated interest, but we wait until right before we want to do financial statements, issue financial statements to capture, capture all of these accumulated expenses. Okay, so the idea here is the opposite of prepayments because, remember, prepayments is the fact that we are paying money in advance for a certain benefit for the future. So in that case, you're giving away cash early on. This case here, you have already received benefit from either hiring employee that have been working for you, but you haven't paid the check. So the work is there, or interest expense, you borrow money from others, you have been using the money, but you haven't paid the interest amount. Right? So this is the opposite of prepayments. You're waiting until after you, the corporation has readily received some sort of benefit or resources, and then you pay the money by cash, pay back the money. Okay, so this is the opposite of prepayment. We wait until after using resources or benefit, then we make the cash payment. So here's a note. Companies do not usually make weekly journal entries for these type of accumulated expenses. We wait until a certain date, and typically that's before we give out financial statements. So by May 31st, or by June 30th, July 31st, company will be clearing some of the entries, making sure that bringing up these accumulated expenses, these prepayments that has been expired, the depreciation expense that has to be recognized all together before financial statements. All right, let's take a look at an example. So if the monthly salary expense for a certain employee is $1,800, and we break that into a bi-weekly check, 900-900. So each May 15th, the employee receives the check directly, the $900. So in that case, it will be just a regular salary expense and credit cash. When it reaches the end of the month, in a corporation perspective, they want to issue financial statements. And if it's not the date for giving away check, it's not a cutoff date for check yet, then this entry would represent the part of the, of the work that employees has been doing, but we haven't actually paid out the cash. So it represents salary expense, we debit it, and we credit liability. So even though this payment will be made immediately June 1st, it seems like just a day difference. We still make this journal entry to represent a liability for this very same day. Because oftentimes monthly statement only represents information from May 1st all the way to May 31st. So anything that's happening on June 1st will be under June's monthly statement. Okay, so it seems like it's just a day before the actual pay date. You might think we can just defer this. But remember that journal entries, we recognize it as it happens. We want to bring up to date the information. If this monthly statement represents only May's journal entry, then we want to bring all the accounts that represents May's activities. So this account basically represents that there's a personnel that you hired that's working for you. Even though you haven't paid the check, you want to recognize the work that they have done. So this is, their work has already turned into a type of expense, and later on, you will have to pay them this $900. So this entry really will be immediately reversed on June 1st. Once the check is out, then 
the salary payable will be debited and then cash will be credited. Okay, but that will be later on. By the end of the month, this will be the adjusting entry, May 31st. Now here's another example. If the company earlier borrowed money, let's say $1,000 from a certain company, and assuming that the interest rate is 10% of that, and if that is on rolling on a monthly basis, then every single month you'll be giving out, you'll be recognizing $100 of interest expense. So that's just an example that I gave you. So if that's the case, then by the end of this month, if this is not the date for your corporation to pay back that $1,000 yet, then this will be the interest expense and interest payable that has to be recognized. Okay, payable is always recognized at the point of time when it's not the day to pay the cash yet. That's why we recognize it under liability. Okay, so it's the money that you owe, but it's not the time for paying it out yet. Typically, it's not the due date or not the paid date for the check. So for each and every journal entry, we have two. Remember that whenever you open up journal, whenever you have journal entries occurred, you have, have to open up the T accounts that represents those journal entries. So you have an interest expense account, interest payable account. Remember, expense is an equity account, and it has the balance on the left side. Equity account regularly is on the right side for revenues, for retained earnings, for common stock, but for expenses and dividends, whenever it incurs, it's on the debit side. A liability account, any type of liability account, as long as it's a regular type, not the contra type, then it will be the regular balance will be listed on the right side whenever it incurs. Okay, if later on, later on, the liability, then you will debit it, reduce it. Okay, so this is a third type, accumulated expenses. Let's work on an example, a question here. Can you assume that a weekly payroll for this company is $300, and when it reaches December 31st, the end of the year, this is a day that falls on Tuesday. Okay, so meaning that we want to bring all the accounts up to date, and this is December 31st is Tuesday. We want to also represent an adjusting entry for the work that employees has been doing for this week, Monday and Tuesday. So if this is the case, what will be the journal entry that you will select from these options? So you have to know what are the accounts to use and also what is the dollar amount. Any thoughts? So if it were, if it was a weekly journal entry for salary, then what would be the dollar amount? If it's a regular week. If it's a regular week, it would just be three hundred dollars, right, for five days. Now it falls on a Tuesday, which means that by the end of the year, we're only trying to if all the other entries were captured then on a weekly basis already. Then this week there was only Monday and Tuesday, and that's it. Right. If we want to represent a statement that ends December 31st, we only have Monday, Tuesday left for this adjusting entry process. So if it's only two days, if five days represents 300, there's $300 uh, for five days of work that worth $300, then each and every day worth $60, right? Then two days altogether worth $120. So the $120 here Remember, this is an adjusting entry, so this is not the day for payment. Payment is given on a weekly basis. Then this is a type of salary payable. This is a type of liability. At the same time, we want to debit salary expense. Okay, so if I change the question here, if I say December 31st falls on a Wednesday, then what would be the dollar amount? 180, right? If it's a Thursday, it will be $240. But regardless of the dollar amount, this will be the journal entry that we'll be doing. Adjusting entries, remember, we're trying to capture and bring up to date some of the accounts. Okay, otherwise, without this entry, we just have the entry that was being done last week. 
up to last Friday. So we need this entry that represents this Monday and this Tuesday before we give out the yearly statement or monthly statement.